This is inverted vitrectomy. Vitrectomy for PVR induced retinal detachment with peripheral retinotomy ensuring retinal stability. A 23 gauge parsplenar vitrectomy is set up. The lens is pretty clear and it is a macula of retinal detachment. Vitreous detachments are removed and the retina gets more mobile. Core and peripheral retractomy are carried out and the eye is moved towards where you want to reach the far periphery without touching the lens. Even a very peripheral retinal degeneration such as a white without pressure can be noticed and the appropriate dirty cycle with high cut rates and aspiration are safe for the procedure. Subretinal PVR is evident and the retina should be separated from its vitreous connections. A peripheral retinotomy is created and extended upwards and downwards. You may notice here you have the uh, visualization from the macula and the far periphery you see the uh, PVR. By uh, continuing with the retinotomy you gotta go superior and inferior very carefully and uh, taking a very good look at the periphery and avoiding those uh, peripheral retinal vessels so as not to cause any, any bleeding. And uh, you see that uh, by the moment you do retinotomy, the retina shortens. Now here we are relieving the uh, superior part. You don't really need to pursue the retina. So the retina comes towards the cutter. And now inferiorly so that you relieve the retina thoroughly. The next step involves slowly injecting perfluorocarbon liquid until it passes towards the very retinal periphery covering the now flattened retinotomy. Endolaser is carefully applied to the retinal periphery, ensuring the lens is avoided and the eye is moved accordingly. A 360 degree laser is then used to create a protective barrier around the entire periphery. The lens stays clear at all times and the laser is uh, then applied here at the retinal periphery right on the spot where the retinotomy was made. I give it three rows as to protect it well, creating this uh, barrier, a very strong one. And I just uh, switch to the other side and do the same, but uh, of course less in intense laser. A direct exchange from perfluorocarbon carbon to silicon oil is set up manually. A bulldog clamp is used to secure the tubing at the scleral incision sites and at the syringe exit. The injection should be performed very slowly to prevent any retinal movement during the exchange. You should remove the last droplet. A good visualization system always helps. Some sutures are placed by the end of the uh, procedure.
On the first post-operative day, the retina is uh, well attached with no subretinal fluid or displacement. This results in a significantly better outcome. Thank you for your attention.